Hey everyone, this is going to be a little bit an all over the place video. I just wanted to show you a few things that I'm working on and give you some kind of quick first impressions review of a few things that I got. So this is, uh, by the way, uh, a canvas that is in my spring collection and you can find it in my shop. It comes in different sizes and I think there is also, I don't know, a pillow or a blanket for this particular piece of artwork. But you can see how lovely the colors are. This is not enhanced or in any way. This is as it is and it's just really, really lovely. I have another one that is also in the spring collection and I don't know which one is my favorite, don't make me choose. But I just love these um, printed canvases. They're ready to hang and they have a very um, kind of an approachable feel. It, it feels more modern to me than like a traditional framed painting under glass. But obviously, you know, if you're painting on watercolor paper, um, you can't really do the canvas thing. So for me, this is kind of the best of both, both worlds. Paint on watercolor paper with watercolor paper the way that I like and then have it um, scanned and printed on a canvas ready to hang. I did get a comment about watercolor medium and why not paint on canvases with watercolor medium. So first of all, um, canvases are pretty expensive. They're a lot more expensive than paper. And secondly, I have used, I've tried two brands of watercolor medium. So basically this is like gesso for watercolors and the result is nowhere near painting on paper. Um, you can use obviously watercolors, but it doesn't look the same, it doesn't feel the same. And I also use other products such as pencils or pastels. And um, yeah, it's just, it's not a nice experience. And um, doing it like this allows me to scan my artwork and then play with different ways of cropping the painting and sometimes uh, maybe a little bit enhancing contrast. I don't see this as like cheating or anything like that. The My goal is to have a piece of artwork that I like and I'm willing to use anything in my disposal to get to that place. So. Um, yeah, just the experience of painting on paper and being able to, you know, buy a block of paper for, um, you know, maybe double the price of a similar size canvas, but a block of paper would give me 15, 20 pieces of paper that I can play with. And also, you know, this, for example, is enlarged. So the original painting is not this size, it's smaller. So I can paint florals and then, you know, for example, take a piece of paper, paint a floral, and then decide, okay, this is the part that I want to print on a canvas. So I just feel this process works a lot better for me. And yeah, so that, to that comment, um, you know, I really wish sometimes people leave comments like they assume that I haven't tried something, I don't know about it, and that's fine. But, you know, sometimes you can be a little bit more polite or ask, have you tried this? Instead of, why don't you just try watercolor medium instead if you want to paint on canvas? I have. It doesn't work. It's not the same. And um, using that middle step, like that extra step of being able to manipulate the photo, whether it's by cropping or slightly uh, changing the colors, enhancing the colors, um, digitally just gives me a ton more possibilities. So that's why I do it this way. And yeah, uh, my thought was to then add to these canvases that already have my artwork printed on them, all kinds of accents and also um, use in my regular watercolor paintings on paper, other products. So I wanna show you a few things that I picked up and I'm really, um, <laughs> That's Lily's artwork. I'm really drawn to the idea of, this is kind of where I'm at with my um, thought process, with the idea of painting watercolor um, 
well, let's say mixed media, but always with watercolor blooms or these like loose abstract flowers. And then uh, painting the background, whether it's on the original piece of artwork or uh, on a printed canvas with another medium. And the thought of gold is particularly appealing to me. Um, although there are a few other options that I want to explore and I'll just show you a few things. So it always, for me, there's, there are two aspects of choosing uh, a product. Um, one is the result and the other one, which is sometimes just as important is the process of using said product. Uh, which includes the actual application of it, but also the everything around it. So, you know, with acrylics, it means you have to clean your brushes properly, otherwise they'll get ruined. It means you have to, you always have some sort of waste unless you're using, you know, like a palette knife, uh, which is one of the more appealing ways to me to use acrylics um, so that I don't have that waste, like, you know, water with acrylics that I have to dump uh, down my drain or something like that. So for me, that is meaningful, um, you know, to each their own. If you have feel differently, that's fine. You do you. I'm just trying to explain to you where I'm coming from and explain also that my choices for a medium um, are not just about the result is what I'm trying to say. So. I mean, the result obviously has to be pleasing, but um, like in general, I might lean in a in one way just because of the properties and the way that uh, I can use a product. So I want to show you here. I was just I mean, I did this sketch while I was sitting down with Lily, my five year old, and we were painting. We do that almost every day. And I was just playing around with different possibilities for the background. So this is. I'll bring everything so I can show you. Okay, so my first thought was uh, acrylics. And this is pretty much what we have going on here. This is Liquitex acrylic um, ink. This is iridescent bright gold. That's the shade. It is lovely, as you can see. Um, my problem with this is you need a brush. <laughs> You know, these things might seem really insignificant and um, not important to you. That is totally okay, but um, I'm just explaining to you why I went in certain directions. So you need a brush for this, meaning you have to clean the brush and it has to be a separate brush from your watercolor brushes. And yeah, you have to like dump the water somewhere. Um, and then otherwise, if you want to cover a large area, then, I mean, this does go a long way, but it's a small bottle. It's, let's say that paint is probably a better way to go than ink in this case. If you want to use a, if you want to cover a large area, then ink is uh, rather wasteful. Although, you know, it is quite concentrated. The nice thing about this is that it really has kind of no body. Um, well, that can be nice or not. It depends the look that you want, but it has that more like flat application, which, you know, might be what you enjoy or not. <laughs> so it just depends what you like. Then this thing is this, which is, um, this is a uh, structure pasta, um, structure paste right yeah structure paste gold or gold tr structural paste molding paste texture paste that kind of thing this is basically acrylic paint that has kind of more body to it it's just heavier it's not really liquid you can this is not like super super uh stiff but you know you can get um more texture with it and i have this brand i've had it for ages i don't even know where where is this made this is uh made in germany so this is the brand it's a nice one i'm not i'm not too into the the particular shade i know these are like small differences but 
the this gold is just a little bit softer i don't know this one almost has like a greenish undertone to it so color wise i'm not a fan and um yeah i think this is what i like to use gold um paste is for like little accents like with a stencil that has i don't know like dots on it um go over it with a palette knife and a paste that's a look that i like for this like covering the whole area i'm not sold and then i would probably say if you have acrylic paint if you kind of want to explore this thing you're probably your best bet is just like you know metallic paint every brand makes them uh you can also find this is a bronze studio so this is studio grade paint but it's it's just lovely and um yeah it's a nice shade of gold which is kind of my kind of gold uh, a bit more pale i would say it's called yellow gold and this is by my local um art shop so it's like their house brand very very easy to find every half decent art store should have some sort of metallic acrylic paint so this is a good option that is affordable however um it's not what i really found uh, attractive and what i want to talk about is this thing so this is a sennelier oil stick not to be confused let's zoom in a little bit not to be confused with oil pastels the difference is in the formulation i would say because the experience of using them is quite similar uh, oil pastels do not cure so you have to somehow fix them and yeah these guys the oil sticks do cure because it's basically oil paint in stick form what i was a little bit hesitant about was i got a few colors from the sennelier um, range the problem with these compared to oil pastels is that oil pastels come in all glorious colors some brands have ranges of like hundreds of colors and the oil sticks do not of course you can mix colors but i'm really into you know just finding my perfect colors and then not really mixing them however if i will find that i enjoy this medium so much i might have to uh, start mixing my own colors because the color range is very 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 limited uh, especially with my particular color preferences so these are the ones that i got i was especially interested in the gold one and this is how it looks so there is nothing bad <laughs> for me to say about this i really enjoyed the process of just you know grabbing the stick um it's not as messy as i was um as i feared and yeah it was enjoyable to paint with i love the look of it it's very painterly as you can see this is how it looks and this is the gold one then this is i'll tell you the gold one is says gold and the number is 28 and then this color is called antique white and i'll show you just the two other colors that i picked up this is naples yellow shocker 567 and then this is flesh ochre 250 so i used both of these here and they were lovely to use i love the painterly effect i think it's a really nice contrast to kind of the flatness of watercolors and the best thing about them is that they are dry really really dry and they were dry this is already a few days old they were dry i think i checked maybe two days later and they were completely dry so this is a thin layer relatively but it's just beautiful and i really really love it and this is definitely something that you know gave me the feels and i'm excited to use to use it on future paintings now the pink that you see here is this thing 
Um, oh, okay. I, I just want to address a question of, okay, why not just use regular oil paint? Um, I did consider it when I picked these up at the store. I also looked at oil paints and all of these items are quite expensive. Like everything that I saw that was like a metallic oil paint that was a nice thing that looked like a nice color to me was pretty expensive. Um, and yeah, I just, to me, the, the um, experience of like using a stick pastel was a lot more appealing than just like tube paint, which then I would have to apply with either a brush or a palette knife. And this was a, a just a much more organic experience. So I don't think I will go in the direction of like tube oil paints, although I, you know, never say never. So the other similar product is a pigment stick by R and F. This is made in the U S and this is again, oil paint in stick form. Uh, the nice thing about these is the color range is much, much better than the Sennelier ones. They are also, I think like, I, I don't want to say double the price, but they're definitely more expensive. Uh, I'm in Europe. So this is a European product. This is an imported product. Uh, so it's not surprising. I don't know how the prices compare in the US. So I would check that. The color range here is lovely and there are a couple of colors. Um, there are a couple of like the teals and like a minty color that were very um, appealing, but because of the steep price, I just picked up this color, which is called Dianthus Pink to try it. And I can report to you. Oh, let's just look. I think these look bigger. Uh, they are a bit softer than these. How much product is there? This is 38 milliliters and this is this. Okay. So same amount of product. Um, yeah, these also apply lovely. You can see here, I blended it with the um, Sennelier one. They blend beautifully. I absolutely think you can combine these without a problem. Uh, what I don't like about this is that it takes much longer to dry. I mean, now it's been really like four or five days and I, I, it doesn't feel like a hundred percent. You know, here I have a bit more product and you can see this this is not new this has been there for days and days and days it was outside it's not super hot now but there was like sun it was outside for a day also so that I don't like uh, however if I'm really into this effect and you know I can only find the color in this brand I might pick up more and then the last thing I want to mention are these guys. I showed these in a haul. I picked these up at the Vienna art store and you can see that video on my channel from, I don't know, the, the it's a relatively recent one. Uh, I picked up these two colors and I wanted to try them. So this is kind of what I had in mind for these. You know, you can create like this kind of relief effect. I'll show you and just add lines and dots and um, yeah, it's it's OK. I'm not crazy about it. Uh, I think it might be fun even maybe to do like a tone on tone on the background, like use these kind of lines, you know, on something like um, like a oil stick background. What I don't like about these is that it's just the nature of the product. I don't think this is a bad product or a bad packaging, but just the nature of these things when you have to squeeze a uh, kind of firm paint through a tiny nozzle, it, it requires force and it's very hard to make, you know, really nice gestural smooth lines uh, because you have to press so hard and the product comes out, you know, relatively slow. So as I said, I mean, this is to me, I, I've tried similar things before. Uh, you know, I think the craft industry have been using such things. I remember like really, really old, like tulip 
um, tubes of this that you could put on clothes and socks and like all these things. It's been around for decades and um, now you can see that, you know, a company like Sennelier kind of, it's called, it's their abstract innovative acrylic, so they kind of pick up on that and um, it's, it, you know, it kind of delivers on what it does, but it also has the limitations, just the way that the product works. I don't know how enjoyable the experience of using it, and it does require some strength, so if you have any kind of, like, uh, arthritis or, you know, just like you don't have... Um, enough strength in your fingers and palm of your hand. This is not a product for you. I don't have any issues and it, it wasn't so much, it wasn't a great experience. However, to get this effect, I think it's a good solution. So I have to play with it a bit and see you know, I mean, it could be fun, like if I want to do background, then, you know, kind of do a tone on tone, maybe add like some leaves or lines or something like that. So you see, I mean, it comes out nicely, but it still requires, this is actually nice, this effect. So yeah, as I said, you have to play, I didn't say that, but the point is whenever you get something new, I would recommend open it up immediately and start playing because you have to get familiarized with different products. So uh, other ideas that I had for kind of playing with other mediums for the backgrounds of, you know, let's say a painting like this. So create some sort of like floral blooms or abstract circles, whatever you want to call these. And then use different mediums for the background. This is something I picked up and this is chalk paint. I just picked up the one that had like a nice color and a good price. This is again by the, the house brand of the store I shop at and the color is just in case you're in Germany or Austria. This is vanilla and yeah so I'm interested in the chalk paint because it has a very kind of flat finish which I find um, appealing so that is another direction that I'm considering and I just picked up the one color to see if I like it and this is the kind of product that you know if I don't use it for this it's very easy to find something to use it on in my home just paint something with this nice um, chalk paint so I don't feel like it's a big risk and this was only a few euros um, yeah you know because I also I don't want to spend like a ton of money on products I'm not sure I will use um, to summarize the big winner for me is the Sennelier oil stick I wish they had more colors Sennelier please make more colors and uh, other than that, I think this is a really, really lovely product. And if you want to explore something like this, if you want a really clean, easy, um, but still kind of painterly and fun way of trying oils, I have never painted with oils. Uh, I think this is a really fun way to go. I hope you enjoyed this kind of weird all over the place video and I'll see you soon in another one. Take care, have a great weekend. And yeah, thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.